In this video, we're going to talk about credit spreads, which are simple option strategies that are very popular among income-driven traders and could quite possibly be the only strategies you ever need. So before getting into the specifics, why do you want to learn the credit spread option strategies? Well, first and foremost, they can profit from stock price increases, decreases, or even if the stock price doesn't move at all, which means credit spreads have a high probability of making money. Another reason credit spreads are very attractive is that they have limited loss potential, which means you'll never have to worry about blowing up when the market makes huge moves in either direction, assuming your trade size is appropriate for your account. Now the third reason every trader needs to understand the credit spread strategy is because they're very simple. So the two primary credit spread strategies only have two option components, which means they're very easy to understand and set up, which overall leads to a better experience when trading options. So what exactly is a credit spread? Well, a credit spread is a simple option strategy constructed by selling an option and buying another option at a further strike price in the same expiration cycle. Now the option you sell is going to be more expensive than the option you buy, which is going to lead to a net credit when entering the position, and that is exactly why it's called a credit spread. Now a credit spread can be used with call options or put options, and when it's used with call options, it's called a call credit spread, or sometimes a bear call spread since it's a bearish position. Now this strategy is constructed by selling one call option and buying another call option at a higher strike price but in the same expiration cycle. If the credit spread is constructed with all put options, it's sometimes called a bull put spread since it's a bullish position, and the put credit spread is constructed by selling one put option and buying another put option at a lower strike price in the same expiration cycle. So it's very simple. If you're trading a credit spread and you're putting on a bearish position or you want the stock price to go down, then you're going to be trading a call credit spread. And if you're trading credit spreads in a bullish manner, which means you want the stock price to increase, then you'll be trading put credit spreads. Now in a second, we're going to look at some real examples using real option data. But first, let's get a basic idea of how the call credit spread and put credit spread profit. As mentioned before, a call credit spread is when you sell a call option and buy another call option at a higher strike price. Now call credit spreads are bearish positions that profit as long as the stock price remains below the spread as time passes. Now on the other side of the equation, a put credit spread consists of selling a put option and buying another put option at a lower strike price. Now put credit spreads are bullish strategies that profit when the stock price remains above the put spread as time passes. Let's look at some examples using historical option data so you can see these concepts in action. In this first example, we're going to look at a call credit spread that expires with the full profit. So the initial stock price when entering this call credit spread is $178.87. And the call credit spread we're going to look at is selling the 180 call and buying the 190 call with 39 days to expiration. Now this particular call spread position was entered for a credit of $3.12 since the 180 call was sold for $4.10 and the 190 call was purchased for $0.98. Cents. So 410 minus $0.98 cents comes out to $3.12. The maximum profit potential of this spread is $312 since we're collecting $3.12 for the spread and we have to multiply that by the option contract multiplier of 100 since each option represents 100 shares of stock. The maximum loss potential of a credit spread is the width of the strikes minus the premium received times 100, which comes out to $688 in this case since we have a $10 wide call spread and we've collected $3.12 for it. So 10 minus 312 comes out to $6.88 and we when we multiply that by 100 we get a maximum loss potential of $688. So let's take a look at how this position performed over time as the stock price changed. So on the top part of this chart, we're looking at the changes in the stock price relative to the call credit spreads strike prices. And on the bottom part of the chart, we can see the corresponding profit and loss of this call credit spread as the stock price is changing. The first part about this trade I want to talk about is when the stock price increased above the short call strike price. Now when you sell a call spread, you want the stock price to remain below your strike prices, but when it increases, the credit spread will increase in value, and if it's at a price higher than what you sold it for, you will have losses. Fortunately, the stock price did not stay high for very long, and after hitting that $180 strike price, 
The stock price fell pretty quickly thereafter, and at expiration, the shares were at $168.38 each, and since we sold the 180-190 call spread, the 180 call and the 190 call both expire worthless, which means the entire credit spread expires worthless as well. Now, since we sold the spread for $3.12, that means the profit per spread is $312. So now let's take a look at a put credit spread example. In this example, the initial stock price is $336.06, and the credit spread we're going to look at is selling the 315 put and buying the 310 put with 31 days to expiration. The entry price of this put credit spread is $1.15 since the 315 put was sold for $5.60 and the 310 put was purchased for $4.45. So the $5.60 premium collected minus the $4.45 premium paid comes out to a net credit of $1.15. With a net credit of $1.15, the maximum profit potential of this put credit spread is $115. The maximum loss potential of this spread is $385 since the put spread is $5 wide and $1.15 was collected. So $5 minus $1.15 is $3.85 of loss potential and when we multiply that by 100 we get a maximum loss potential of $385 per spread. Let's take a look at how this put spread performed over time. Now on the first point of the chart, we can see the stock price collapses through the entire put spread early on in the trade, which results in some pretty heavy losses on this put spread. So at the lowest point, the spread was down about $160 per spread. Fortunately, the stock price recovered and was trading at $324.18 at the time of the put options expiration date. With the stock price at $324.18 at expiration, the 315 and 310 put both expire worthless, which means the put credit spread that was sold for $1.15 is now worth $0 at expiration. Since the spread was sold for $1.15 and expired worthless, the profit per put credit spread is $115 in this example. So now that you've seen historical put and call credit spread examples, Let's go ahead and look at some credit spreads on the Tastyworks trading platform to look at how to set up these positions in real time. So I've just opened up the Tastyworks trading platform and the stock I'm currently looking at is Southwest Airlines, which has the ticker symbol LUV. So the reason I picked this stock is because I want to go through a put credit spread example. So as we can see here, since 2017, Southwest Airlines has been trading above $50 per share basically the entire time, but the stock has been pretty volatile above that price range. So as we can see here in September of 2017, Southwest Airlines took a strong bounce off that $50 price level and is now approaching that price level again. So if a trader thought that this $50 price level would continue to hold into the future, one thing that they could do would be to sell a put spread to reflect that opinion. So to get to the trade page, all we have to do is click on the trade tab to the left of the chart, which will bring us to the option chain for Southwest Airlines. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the 45-day expiration cycle, which is July of 2018 as of this recording. So I'm going to click on that to open up the July options. And on the left-hand side here, we can see the call options. On the right-hand side, we see the put options. And in the middle, we have the strike prices. So to set up a put credit spread, we're going to have to sell a put option and then buy another put option at a lower strike price. So I'm going to use the $50 strike as our short put strike price. So I'm going to click on the bid for the 50 put, and that put is currently trading with a bid price of $1.20. Now to create our short put spread or put credit spread, I'm going to have to buy another put option at a lower strike price, which could be the 47 and a half strike price if we're looking for a conservative put spread, or I could purchase the 45 put if I'm looking to sell a wider put spread with more risk and more profit potential. So I'm going to start with the 47 and a half put. So when I create this strategy, down at the bottom here we can see that it says it's trading for 70 cents and right here we see it says CR which is a credit. So this is indicating to me that I've queued up this put credit spread and it's trading for a 70 cent credit as of this moment. So we can also see the maximum profit, which is said to be $70, and that's just the price that it's currently trading at times 100, and that gives us $70. 
Now the maximum loss of this strategy is $180, which is coming from the maximum width of the spread or the maximum value of the spread at expiration, which is two and a half dollars, and then we're subtracting out the credit received. So if, if we take 50 minus 47 and a half, this spread is two and a half dollars wide, but since we're collecting 70 cents for it, the most we can lose on the position is $1.80, and if we multiply that by 100, we get a maximum loss of $180. Now we can also visualize this by clicking on the curve, and this will bring us a visualization of this strategy's expiration risk profile graph. So right here, we have the maximum profit potential, which is $70, which is going to occur if Southwest Airlines is at or above $50 per share at expiration in 46 days. Now the maximum loss potential of this strategy is $180 as we've just discussed, and that's going to take place if the stock price is below $47.5 at expiration in 46 days. Now for our call credit spread example, I wanna hop over to Tesla just to switch things up a little bit. And the reason I wanna look at Tesla is because as we can see here, Tesla in recent weeks has come off of this 310 price level a couple times and if a trader believed that price action would continue into the future then a call credit spread could be a good trade in Tesla because call credit spreads are bearish positions that profit as long as the stock price remains below the call spread. So for this example we're going to have to use a short call and then purchase a call at a higher strike price. So for our short call Let's look at a 310 or maybe a 315 call to sell and then buy a call spread or a call option above that to complete our call credit spread. So I'm going to go to the trade page and open up July options with 45 days to go. And on the left hand side here, we can see the call options. So as I said before, we're going to look at selling a 315 call. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the 315 calls bid price. And to complete our call credit spread, we'll have to purchase a call option at a higher strike price. So I'm going to just start with the 320. And if I queue that up, we can see that the 315, 320 call credit spread is currently trading for a $1.93 credit. So I'm actually going to lock the price at $1.90 just so it's not jumping around on me while I'm talking about the numbers. But on the bottom here, we can see that if we sell this spread for $1.90, the maximum profit potential on this spread is $190, while the maximum loss potential is $310. So the reason that is coming to be about is that if you sell a spread for $1.90, the maximum profit potential is going to be realized if the spread's price falls to $0, in which case you will keep the entire premium that you initially collected when selling that spread. So. $1.90 times the standard option contract multiplier of 100 gives us $190 of profit potential. And since this is a five point wide call spread and we're selling it for $1.90, our maximum loss potential becomes $310. Now that's because at expiration, if Tesla is above 320, this five point wide call spread will be worth five points. Um, and since we collected $1.90 for it, that gives us a maximum loss potential on the spread of $3.10 per spread, which in actual loss terms is $310. Now, as we did before, to visualize the profit and loss potential of the spread, all we have to do is come up to the curve here and make sure this analysis box is checked. And once we do that, we can see this expiration payoff graph for this 315, 320 call credit spread in Tesla that expires in 45 days. So as we can see here on the left hand side, we have our maximum profit zone. And as we can see in this box up here, it says PL exp. And at any price below one or 315, it says the PL at expiration will be $190. So that's telling us that it doesn't matter where Tesla is, if it's at 315 or if it's at 220, our profit on this spread will be $190 at expiration. Because at any of those prices, the 315 call will expire worthless and the 320 call will expire worthless, which means if we sold the spread for $1.90, the spread's value will be $0 at expiration, which means we'll, we'll keep the entire $1.90 premium that we collected when selling the spread. Now on the right hand side, we have our maximum loss potential zone, which is at any price above $320 per share 
at expiration when these options expire, which is in 45 days. So it doesn't matter if Tesla is at $320 or $450, at any price above 320, this 315, 320 call spread will be worth $5 at expiration because the value of any debit or credit spread can only be the width of the spread at expiration. So since this spread is five points wide, then if this spread is fully in the money at expiration, which is going to happen if Tesla is above 320, then this spread will be worth $5 at expiration. And if we sold it for $1.90, that means our loss at expiration would be $310 per spread. So this shows why credit spreads are so popular is that if the stock price increases significantly or decreases significantly against your spread, then you have limited loss potential. So it doesn't matter in this case if Tesla is at 320 or 450 at expiration in 45 days, the maximum loss of this position is $310, which is much more conservative to say a short stock position, which the losses grow as Tesla's price would increase. If you enjoyed this video, please give the video a like and be sure to check out some more of our options trading videos that you can see on this page right now. Once again, I'm Chris from Project Option and thank you for watching.